Welcome back inside our studio. We got a new segment here tonight on the show. We welcome in Tyler Ratz, the fantasy football expert. He's going to break down your wants and needs for this week's fantasy football matchups. Thank you, Sam. And injuries are really starting to pile up for fantasy owners. You look at a Des Bryant and a Big Ben Roethlisberger, a couple of guys who are just now coming back from injury, but they are still not 100%. You think of Matt Forte, Tony Romo, a couple of guys who are currently injured but hope to be back by the end of the season, but it may be too late for your fantasy football season. And then you think about the big-name stars who are already out for the season, Jamal Charles, a torn AC. Le'Veon Bell, a torn MCL, Steve Smith Sr. with the torn Achilles, and then Keenan Allen with the lacerated kidney. So many injuries taking out so many stars this year in the NFL. Now, give the fans some tips on who they should add to their fantasy lineups on the waiver wires this week. Well, Sam, that really is the million-dollar question for fantasy owners. Who do I add to replace these stars? And starting off with three running backs, first I have D'Angelo Williams. He is a must-add in every format of fantasy football. He will be a top 15 running back to finish the season. Just think about this. After week two in the NFL, he was leading the NFL in rushing in replacement of Le'Veon Bell, who was dealing with a suspension. Really like D'Angelo Williams. Jeremy Langford filling in for Matt Forte. This may be more of a plug if you own Matt Forte, someone to replace him until Forte gets healthy. Don't really know how long he'll be out as of now, but the Bears really feel that he can be the workhorse until Forte returns. And then you look at Pierre Thomas. This is more of a deeper league stash. He's a guy who just signed with the 49ers this week. The backfield is a mess. The 49ers as a whole are a mess. You have Carlos Hyde, Reggie Bush, Mike Davis all dealing with injuries. If Pierre Thomas can get used to this offense quick, he's a guy who scored 40 touchdowns in his career. He's a guy that I really like if he can learn this offense and Carlos Hyde stays hurt. And then looking at receivers, you have two San Diego Chargers and Stevie Johnson and Malcolm Floyd, a couple of guys who will benefit from Keenan Allen's absence. Phillip Rivers leads the NFL in passing yards, and it's not even close. This is an offense that likes to pass. They will continue to pass. And just because Keenan Allen isn't there doesn't mean they're going to mix things up. These two will definitely be getting a lot more targets. And finally, I like Michael Floyd. He had a broken hand to start the season. His season didn't really start off how he wanted it to, but he's finally building that chemistry with Carson Palmer. He has at least 50 yards and a touchdown in each of his last three games. And moving forward, this is a guy who should continue to benefit playing on the Cardinals, who have the second-best scoring offense in the NFL. Well, there you have it. Now, talk about some guys that you could see having great seasons so far, but this week just not their matchup. Who do you keep on the bench? And this is one guy that I hate to say because he's actually on my fantasy football team, but it's Adrian Peterson going against the St. Louis Rams. Over the last three games, if you take out one run by Adrian Peterson, in which it went for 75 yards, he is averaging just 2.9 yards per carry. That's getting into Trent Richardson range, a place no running back wants to be. And he hasn't found the end zone in, three in the last three games, despite getting the goal line carries. So he's struggling a little bit, and he's going against a Rams defense that has been playing out of its mind lately, allowing only six points per game and 60 yards rushing per game over each of the last two games. And you know that Adrian Peterson will be a focal point for the St. Louis Rams defensive scheme. I know that you can't bench him. You probably don't have a better option than Adrian Peterson, but you may need to take down your expectations just a little bit with Adrian Peterson this week. It's crazy to think having a guy like Adrian Peterson and keeping him on the bench. Who is a guy you really like the matchup this week? Well, I may be saying this one based solely off emotion and someone that I am hoping plays well, but it's Peyton Manning. I know he has struggled. Just one passing touchdown over his last three games, two touchdowns to eight interceptions in his last four games. But this is why I like Peyton Manning. He has a great matchup. The Colts have allowed at least 13 fantasy points to every quarterback so far this season. And the Colts just really aren't playing that well. You know Peyton Manning will be hyped for this game. And he did look good last week against the Packers. 340 yards passing. He looked more sure of himself, making stronger throws than at any point before this season. And he had six completions of 20-plus yards. This could be the last time that we ever see number 18 play in Indianapolis, and I think that he will come to play against the Colts. Thank you, Tyler. Everyone go take your phones out and set your fantasy lineups. You hear it here first with Tyler Ratz. Now we're going to transition from the football field to the baseball field. The baseball team just wrapped up fall ball last week, and they're back in the weight room bulking up for this year's season. The team just released the schedule for the 2016 season, and it's showing some familiar non-conference play, including teams like Butler, Cincinnati, and Notre Dame. 
The first game is set for February 19th in Middle Tennessee. The IU men's cross country team finished fourth at the Big Ten Championships this past weekend. Rory Hunter and Jason Chris earned first team all-conference honors. The women's team placed ninth at the conference meet as Amanda Banke earned second team honors. The program will host the Hoosier Invitational at the IU Cross Country Course on Friday at 2.20 p.m. for all runners not competing at the NCAA Regionals. For those racing at the Great Lakes Regional, they will travel to Madison, Wisconsin for the November 13th meet. That's right. And for the women's field hockey team, they're hosting the Big Ten Field Hockey Tournament this year, and it's kicking off this week. IU is going into the tournament as the number three seed and taking on Penn State with the number six seed. The game is set for Thursday, November 5th at 5.30 at the IU Field Hockey Complex and will be aired live on Big Ten Network. Win in your in is the mantra for IU men's rugby as the team prepares to hit the road this week. The Hoosiers head to Madison, Wisconsin in a must-win match if they want to make it to the Big Ten Championship next week. The team remains undefeated on this season and is coming off of a bye week last weekend. The Badgers also need to win this game for a chance to play in the championship game, but the Hoosiers say they are not overlooking this crucial road match. The teams meet Saturday in Wisconsin. The Big Ten Championship is next weekend. IU women's rugby is already preparing for their championship weekend. The Hoosiers were practicing this weekend with hardware in mind. They travel to State College this weekend with their sights on a match against Notre Dame. If the ladies get past the Irish on Saturday, they get a rematch with Penn State on Sunday. As we mentioned earlier in the show, the IU football team did have their bye week this past weekend, but there was still plenty of action that happened throughout the conference. Sam and I are now joined by Dimitri Bubaris, who gets us all caught up. Guys, this is the home stretch of the Big Ten schedule, and with that come a lot of bowl implications. Now, the, the conference is allocated 10 bowl games, but through week nine, only seven teams in the Big Ten are bowl eligible, meaning that only seven teams have six or more wins. That leaves three open bowl games, and that really opens the door for a bunch of five-win teams. That's right. It's crazy to think about losing records, being able to make bowl games, and IU could be one of them. They very well could be. Well, the Big Ten's top two teams, Ohio State and Michigan State, they were on buys this week. But if you were looking for excitement, look no further than Saturday's nightcap. Minnesota, with a chance to bust any final and fading playoff hopes for Michigan, will get to that in a bit. Lead things off with Nebraska at Purdue, both teams struggling in 2015. Tommy Armstrong injured, so Riker Fife gets the start. Jump to the third, Boilermakers leading and looking for more. David Blau puts this only where Jordan Darosevich can make the play. Shades of Willie Mays with the over-the-shoulder grab. Purdue up 28-16. Fourth quarter and Fife throws behind his intended target. Intercepted for the fourth time Saturday. You gotta take care of the football. Nebraska turned the ball over five times. That was the difference in this one. Purdue wins 55-45. And how about this? For the first time since 2011, Purdue led a Big Ten game at the half. All right, over to Happy Valley, Penn State hosting Illinois. Pick it up in the third. Now we know Christian Hackenberg can throw, but can he catch? A little trickery, and it works for Penn State. Nick Scott to Hackenberg. Pretty good toss by the tailback. Nittany Lions, 23 zip. Penn State rolling in this one early fourth. Saquon Barkley in the Wildcat, and he's going to keep it, hurtling his way into the end zone. Take a look at that once more. Penn State pitches a shutout and wins big 39-0. Maryland at number 10, Iowa. The Hawkeyes, one of three unbeaten teams in the Big Ten. No Jordan Kanziri in this one, no problem. Second quarter, and here's Akram Wadley bouncing 11 yards in for the touchdown. Three Iowa running backs would cross Pater Saturday. Iowa up 14 zip. Middle of the fourth and Maryland driving, but Perry Hills throws the jailbreak screen in traffic. This one goes 88 yards for six the other way. Seventh pick of the season for Desmond King. That's tied for the top in the nation. Iowa's defense with four turnovers. Hawkeyes win it 31-15 and sit at number nine in the first college football playoff poll of the season. All right, in Madison, Rutgers at Wisconsin. Rutgers without Leonte Carew. And Corey Clement returns for the Badgers for the first time since week one. Early first and on Clement's second carry of the game, he hits the hole and does this. First touchdown of the season, Wisconsin up 10-0. Clement not done there. Second quarter and Clement finds a seam and it's just green grass ahead. 
21 yards for the score. Clement would finish with 115 yards and three touchdowns. This one was all Wisconsin from the get-go. Badgers win 48-10. Well, it's not a Saturday in the Big Ten without a little drama. Minnesota honoring head coach Jerry Kill, who retired last week due to health concerns. Early second Michigan driving, and Jake Rudock fires a bullet to J.U. Chesson. Chesson holds on, Michigan up 14-3. Take a look at that, Chesson took a big hit on the tail end. Rudock would go down in the third, so in comes Wilson Spade. Michigan down five with five to go, and Spate off the play fake, finds Chesson in the end zone. Michigan would go for two and get it, but here come the Gophers. 25 seconds left, Mitch Leidner to Drew Wolitarski, his only catch of the night. Initially, this was ruled a touchdown, but officials would take a look and overturn it. So Minnesota at the one. Two plays later, Minnesota electing to go for the win, and Mitch Leidner is stuffed by the Michigan defense. The Wolverines walk off with a defensive stand, 29-26, the final. All right, that'll do it for week nine. And off the field, it was Buckeyes quarterback JT Barrett that made headlines, even though Ohio State did not play. Barrett was arrested for operating a vehicle while under the influence. Urban Meyer stepped right in, suspended Barrett for the Minnesota game this weekend. And that'll mean that Cardell Jones is your starter. You gotta hate to see that for the Ohio State Buckeyes organization. I mean, JT Barrett, he's a captain. He's now the quarterback of the team. Your first string quarterback just got named it over Cardell Jones. And you do something like that, you just hate to see that for the organization. And how about this? Cardell Jones was the one that picked up Barrett from the police station after he got arrested. How about an ironic twist there? Yeah, that's gotta be a very uncomfortable ride home. Yeah, that's very interesting. It'll be even more interesting to see how this whole thing plays out if Barrett is becomes the starter after the whole suspension for week 10. Well, that does it for our show. We will be at the IU-Iowa football game this weekend as the Hoosiers host the Hawkeyes, the unbeaten Hawkeyes, might I say, who are 8-0 for just the second time in school history. We'll also be at the IU exhibition game against Bellarmine this Monday, this upcoming Monday, for their second exhibition game. For Dimitri Bubaris and Sam Lieberman, I'm Brent Farkas. Thanks for watching.